What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smart Out Moments Smack Talk Podcast. I'm your host of the panel, as always, Tony Mango. Joining me on the mic for this episode, pretty much as always, we've got Callum Wiggins. I'm happy to be here on the Tony panel. I'm glad that you are happy. The Tony panel is happy to have you. And <laughs> Robert DeFelice. I thought it was the Mango panel. It's, there's a lot of panels. There's like a wood panel. Here's a, I'm not going to go down this, not that I'm going to do an advertisement for Home Depot here. Uh, although I do like Home Depot more than Lowe's. Sponsorship. If you want to give me some kind of money, I'll, I'll fucking plug you. <laughs> I think we should have done the Home Depot plug before the ladder match, don't we? <laughs> we should have probably, it would have made more sense. Uh, the context of this, if you are unaware, we are doing back-to-back recordings here of two different editions of the Fan Ounce table. The Fan Ounce table is our commentary tracks. And we just went and watched the 1995 SummerSlam ladder match between uh, Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon for the Intercontinental Championship. And we're going to pivot a little bit. We're going to continue on with Shawn Michaels here, but we're going to not have the ladder match, not have 1995 SummerSlam. What we're going to be doing here is watching Hulk Hogan versus Shawn Michaels from the August 21st, 2005 SummerSlam. It was in the MCI Center in Washington, D.C., it is one of these legendary matches where it couldn't be further from what we had just watched. A match that we watched beforehand is two people going out there trying to put on the best show, keeping the ring psychology up and working their butts off. This is a mess, and it's a hilarious mess. It's one of my favorite things uh, that Shawn Michaels has ever done because it's just so ridiculous. And uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to talk about this was just because it's one of the more fun things at SummerSlam. Another reason why is Hulk Hogan's been in the news a lot lately, and he may or may not be kind of back into the fold with WWE. Seems like he kind of is. So we're talking SummerSlam over the next couple of weeks and stuff. That pay-per-view's coming up. And we're kind of reminiscing about old SummerSlam things. This kind of pops up, and hey, we just kind of want to revisit it. So we kind of invite you guys to do the same. And... If you don't know how this works, this is pretty simple, but sometimes it can be a little confusing. So here's a breakdown of what you need to do. We can't give you the video. Copyright reasons, it will get taken down on YouTube and stuff. So you're going to want to go to the WWE Network, and you can find a link to what the video in particular is. It's SummerSlam 2005. You can just do a search for it if you don't have the link. Uh, go to that and go to the time code of 2 hours, 19 minutes, and 22 seconds. That's what you're going to want to line up to us. I'll give you a countdown of three, two, one, play. When I say play, that's when you hit the play button. And that's kind of how we work this. Uh, you will be synced up with our audio. The audio that we talk about is just going to be kind of our opinions and our perspective of what's going on and our retrospective idea of what this whole thing ended up being. We didn't work on it. Uh, we've never been in WWE. We're not behind the scenes for this kind of stuff. So you're not going to get any insight for that kind of stuff. It's just going to be kind of like a bunch of friends sitting around bullshitting about wrestling. Uh, give a little bit of context to this. Um, you guys were watching more around this time than I was. I didn't get back into WWE until I can't remember exactly when, but it was in 2006. So I just missed this essentially. Um, I have gone back and watched different things, of course, over the years because I need to do my research, but I wasn't watching this live, and I've never actually sat through the entire 2005 SummerSlam. So from your guys' points of view, going into this match, what had you been thinking at the time? All right, well, you got to think, we're young here. I was just turned 12. And Callum, I don't know how old you were. Uh, not yet. Uh, so, think about this. I'm thinking, it's Hogan, it's Michaels. I'm completely, you know, into the story of these legends clashing. And we get heel Michaels that I hadn't had too much exposure to live. I had seen it on tape, but not like while he's an active competitor live. So I was all over this. And then the actual match happens, and I didn't get it at the time because I was 12. So I just thought, you know, this is what Heel Michaels did, and, you know, Hogan's offense is like that. It's so much funnier as an adult. (laughs) 
yeah, this is a, a weird point in time. I'd only been watching wrestling for about three years at this point. So I was very familiar with Michaels, having watched him quite a fair amount. And uh, so I knew how good he was. Uh, Hogan, uh, funny enough, obviously the biggest name in fresh wrestling. Uh, despite him being in the first ever match I ever saw, which was him against Brock Lesnar on an episode of SmackDown, I was very unfamiliar beyond like the stuff that I'd seen in 2003 and stuff like that, where he was obviously an old man. Not really as... like I, I didn't realise the hype behind him as much as now I do. Um, with this stuff, I mean, look back retrospectively, the amount of politicking bullshit that surrounded this match is frankly on a legendary level (laughs) it really is and even for these two standards and these two are renowned for being big political bullshitters and you put two of them in the same match and you this this is what you get uh but at the time it was just like it was fun to see michaels be a heel like be just a proper heel like not even just like begrudgingly, but to really just go for the throat. Like he obviously retrospectively, I go back and look and see what he would be doing in the likes of '97 and '98. But yeah, it was a fun t- t- change of pace, and yeah, I thought it would it would lead to a, a good match. I didn't expect it to be quite like the way it turned out, but it was fun. Did do you buy into the rumors that there was supposed to be another two of these? Well, we can get oh, into that a little bit more when we start talking about yeah. the match, but uh, that is kind of a perspective of uh, the zeitgeist, I guess you should yeah. kind of say I mean, around this time. Just to put into a little bit more context, just to before we start, the idea that um, Hogan had only recently returned to WWE, having been like inducted as a Hall of Fame at uh, WrestleMania 21, after about a year and a half, two year hiatus from the company. And Michaels was fresh off a feud with uh, Kurt Angle, which produced far better matches than the one we're about to watch. But uh, maybe not as memorable, maybe just about as memorable. But it was a very interesting time, both their careers, where Michaels was hitting pretty much an in-ring peak, almost. And Hogan was still had something in the tank, but nowhere near as much as he used to and he didn't really have that much at that point in time anyway so and for even more context a lot of this was about hogan having a mini comeback to promote his vh1 reality show hogan knows best and they would show a lot of clips on tv of the reality show and actually the tag match where sean turns on hogan was Carlito and Kurt Angle versus Michaels and Hogan, which was set up as after one of these clips, Kurt Angle said, you know, Hulk, I don't care about making you tap out, but I'd love to make your daughter tap out. And uh, (laughs) this is the state of not only wrestling, but pop culture in the summer of 2005. Very reality trash TV based stuff. So we go from reality to the complete disregard of reality with this. <laughs> I'm glad we moved away from that reality stuff. I'm glad that was oh, bad. Thank but... God. So I have a little refresher, everybody. I will give you a countdown of three, two, one, play. You should be on 219.22. Uh, as far as context of what that means, they should be fading out from the still image of Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan just like staring at each other you should see it on your screen on um the youtube uh video itself the and video. the actual screen that you should have up right now that paused is just black with the wwe logo in the bottom left hand corner uh that way you should be all synced up with us remember it's three two one play you hit the play button on the play button uh on the play button on the play button hit the play button when i say play all right everybody so get yourself sorted out let's get this started three Two, one, play. Fading in here, and the bell's going to ring right now. Damn it. <laughs> Maybe they don't ring the bell. <laughs> Look at that. Well, we got cereal. Hogan, Hogan very crunched. <laughs> <laughs> I never 
notice that. Oh, this is a smart crowd if I ever saw it. All right. Well, we don't start off with a bell. <laughs> I didn't watch yeah, the Santa time. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen this match, too. Uh, but Shawn Michaels is obviously coming out here. Um, you should be synced up with us now. This uh, SummerSlam logo, I mentioned before with the previous the ladder match that we were doing like that, I like the old SummerSlam logo. I don't like this one. The big S. I don't like it at all. I prefer this one to the one that they have now, but my favorite is the one we'd just seen from 98, from 95. That might be the type of thing, though, that maybe... Uh, Holy shit, Pyro! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the last time we saw Pyro. It was a couple minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> HBK sucks. Yeah, he is the heel. That dude did not like the pyro. Yeah. It is quite interesting to just see him as like the um I mean he's not really behaving like the bad guy. Yeah, he's, he's just slapping the hands of the well, crowd too. It's hard to be a heel when you just finish praying. <laughs> yeah. Well, unless you're Muhammad Hassan. I mean, the rumor goes along with the ideas of the fact that Michaels was reluctant to be the heel for this match. But he wanted to be a babyface versus babyface match with Hogan. Which I but, mean at different points in time, you could see that sometimes Vince just doesn't like that, but it works if you've got the good enough people. Hulk but Hogan was, and uh, Ultimate Warrior yeah, was babyface, babyface. It wasn't. It wasn't Vince saying, "I oh, wish to have a heel versus babyface." It was Hogan saying that it was meant to be a heel versus babyface. Right, baby that's the difference maker here. Yeah. And when Hogan wants to be the babyface in this scenario, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes when he's a heel, it doesn't work. Look at uh, Hogan Rock. He ended up being the baby face of that. Yeah. So wh- while we're just going through the entrances, we might as well try and get a little bit of the politicking into the the mix. So there's obviously a lot of conflicting stories, both from Hogan and Michael's end of things. But the general consensus is that there was going to be three matches or at least a couple, one more rematch, which, uh, spoiler alert, Hogan obviously wins this match and then you have uh, Michael's would win the rematch. But uh, instead of yeah, the crowd, the crowd, look at all these Hulk Hogan signs, it's amazing. Look at all, like you just see a lot of really MTV-looking people in the crowd. <laughs> let's but, say, but Hogan, as Hogan does, essentially decided that he wasn't going to go with the third match, and that is kind of the reason why Michael's decided to be. As a unprofessional, shall we say, in this match as he was. This is the type of thing that when we were going through our superstar scores and we got to the professionalism and the backstage kind of stuff, this hindered Shawn Michaels a little bit. Yeah. But, I mean, you can kind of understand his point of view to a certain extent, too. Because if you have an agreed upon idea of three matches, you do the one person wins, the other person wins, and then you do the rubber match, and then it becomes, yep. no, I don't, I refuse to, then it's like, oh, well, screw By you, By the then. way, this is annoying. The American flag? Shawn Michaels, it's, it's not like you're facing Muhammad Hassan here, bud. Shawn right. Michaels is American. What are you doing? Yeah, no one was facing Muhammad Hassan at this point. Cause already... Yeah, they killed him off. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's the idea, like, the, the, the most, like, childish things about it is the idea that uh, Hogan was going to win the field. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Amazing. I, I have so much respect for Michaels for what he did in this match. And that's the thing. that It's like, I can understand why people would be pissed at him, but I, if I were in his case, and it, walking in his shoes, I probably would do the same thing, and, because and, it's just yeah, kind of like, oh, fuck you, buddy, you know? Like, and don't get me wrong, it's hard to have a certain amount of sympathy with Michaels, because Michaels is renowned for his history, and obviously not at this point in his career, but in the history, just constantly like saying that he wouldn't lose matches, he wouldn't drop the title, he wouldn't do anything else. But, um, so, maybe this is just the just a desserts that he meant to get, he got out politics by the greatest politics career in history. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, yeah, it's the idea that... At this he, point... It's, I said something similar on the hot tags. He strikes me as the kind of guy who just always thinks Hulkamania is running wild. And can you Shawn blame Michaels, him? Shawn Michaels was no, you know, jobber at this point. Yeah, I know. very crunch. That's so good. That that's like 
a top notch sign. Yeah, that's brilliant. You don't see signs like that anymore. No, now you just oh, see them. them yeah, I was going to say, now you just see them getting taken away. Well, nowadays you can bring Hulk Hogan signs because in the past you obviously would take them away because he wasn't as a persona non grata. God, look at him f- f- fling his arms around. He probably just forced Michaels over there with the wind power that his arms were generating. <laughs> That's a renewable energy source, Hulk Hogan's <laughs> arms. Those pythons, man, fuck uh, coal and oil. I think I remember like a, a writer at some point saying that the, the story about like the build up to this match was uh Michaels would suggest to Hogan the idea of okay we're gonna have the three matches I win the first you win the second and then we do the rubber match the steel cage and then Hogan says dude I'll absolutely love that idea but how about I win all three matches instead because <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what Hogan did Hogan he had people he always in like the build up to his big feuds he would have like he would lose in segments, stuff like that, and people would overpower him in segments and maybe tag team matches and stuff like that. But he would never ever lose matches. It's, like he wouldn't actually like lose a rubber match to people. Only rarely would he actually lose matches, which obviously was a great thing for his aura. But nowadays, it obviously he was part time in the most extreme sense of the word. But what do you? But think it's quite about... weird to think that Michaels is the full time guy in this match. What do you think about real quick? The after this, he randomly suggested on live television that he would wrestle Austin at WrestleMania, <laughs> and Austin was just like, "No, what the fuck is wrong with you? I can't wrestle." And no one even cleared this with me. And there went ho- all Hogan's hopes and dreams. Plus, I wonder yeah. who would have won that. Austin. They wouldn't have. I think Austin would have beat Hulk. Well, let's let's put it this way. I think that probably would have happened, but I think uh, Hogan would have pushed it as hard as he possibly could. Just like, well, I think that maybe we should do something else, brother. You know, like that kind of thing. So Dude, this is going to be the first move of the match right here. It, this is just already yeah. great. It says, it's like, Dude, I absolutely like, totally agree that you're on fire right now and totally love what you're doing. But, you know, the crowd want to see Hulk win, essentially. <laughs> I'm doing it for the people, dude. I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it for them. I would have loved to have seen a cage match between the two. Can you imagine Sean bouncing off the cage for Hogan? I would love to imagine... Uh, <laughs> I'd love to imagine like Hogan trying to climb the cage. This is the second time now Sean's told him to shut up. We should also talk about the fact that like before the... Uh, or is it the you screwed bet chance? Yeah, because they never actually, let go. Actually, Brett was kind of well. Which one? In. Which one screwed Brett? <laughs> Survivor <laughs> Series or uh, WrestleMania Nine? <laughs> yeah, That's quite I really did think Bret Hart was going to come back here again. You know, being twelve years old, I was convinced. Like at some point, there will be a ref bump, and I really thought Brett was coming. Hmm. Which is quite an amazing thing, like, in 2005, I had no idea who Bret Hart was. Is that Kyoto? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Quite weird, you would have expected, like, Hebner for this sort of match. Yeah. Especially if Michael's going to put a sharpshooter in. Well, you see, uh, Hogan said no because of the sharpshooter history and the <laughs> print <reference> history. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that Sean oversells overselling. Like, yeah. he does this weird bump, and then he's just kind of like, oh, God, I can't believe that Hogan did that to me. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Like, that yeah, kind of thing. It's just... He's doing this, obviously. He's trying to entertain, but he's also doing this to make a mockery out of Hogan. Yeah, he's proven a point. I mean, it, he, after after this uh, show, obviously, they do a, uh, the episode of Raw afterwards, and Michaels just turns back into a baby face when they realize they're not going to do a second uh, match. And he talks about how, oh, Hogan was too agile. He was too crisp with his offense i couldn't i couldn't hold up to that sort of level of competition just like completely burying him Shawn michaels is the greatest of all time he really is and the stuff like this is just proof of that because he can go out there and he can have these amazing matches and stuff but then it's like everybody always says uh you know oh Shawn michaels could wrestle a broom and it'll be a five-star match and stuff he proves here he can wrestle a five-star bad match <laughs> Not even necessarily a five star good match. Like he can go. You want to have a piece of shit? I'll do it. <laughs> you know, like this is the rare breed of like wrestling match where it's so bad it's good. 
Oh yeah, it's just it's a mockery. It's the type of thing that like you would never want to show this to somebody who doesn't know what wrestling is and say this is what I like. Yeah, the up in the air. (laughs) Oh god, it's hilarious. (laughs) All my all Hogan is doing is just like little these punches. Essentially, that's all Hogan's office punches: the big boot, the leg drop. That's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> and he's even doing the whole like, oh, like oh, my lights have been knocked out kind of thing. Yeah. Well, this is amazing. I always think that, like, in a match like this, it would have been great if uh, Michaels would have hit like the sweet chin music at the very beginning of it, and Hogan would have had to sell it, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. You see, Hogan swatted at the air, and Michaels was prepared to sell it. <laughs> Woo! I wonder how many times. I mean, Hogan's actually probably been choked quite a bit because he had quite a few matches with Rick Slayer. So, it's like I thought it, it wasn't really because his phrase on Detra was uh, to fight like bigger people than him. So it's quite. <laughs> 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 God, the cameraman is too worried at the moment. Do you, do you think Just Hogan's getting annoyed? Oh, he's, he's probably so pissed. Either that, or he's just like, ah, oh, I didn't know I had it in me. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, if it was any other wrestler, I'd say, like, oh, he knows what's going on, but if it's it's, it's Hogan, you kind of think, oh, wow, maybe he's actually, like, feeling this. I should lighten up a little. I love it. It's so, like, so over the top that it's amazing. And this is the last decent thing that Hogan did with his career, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, can we also talk about the fact that prior to this, Hulk Hogan was teasing joining TNA before he actually joined TNA. He was, uh, he was rumored to have, he was, meant, he was rumored to be in the, involved in TNA's first ever, like, three-hour pay-per-view. Well, uh, the, he was there when they had Savage there, and Savage kind of told him to fuck off, so he left. <laughs> Well, it was, it was said that he was going to fight uh, Jeff Jarrett for the NWA title, but decided instead, oh, WWE would eventually come calling. And well, they did. you know what, though? They gave that opportunity to Savage. I wonder if Savage had stayed and Hogan had stayed, if we would have seen in 2005 a main event of Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan. I wouldn't have put it past this. But it, it, this has been quite basic. I don't even know if you've seen a move yet. Uh, Shawn Michaels has done several to himself. <laughs> I just like punches, chops, like crotching yourself on the ropes, falling over. Well, that was the basis of every Hogan match. <laughs> He's like, nah, I'm not even hitting the turnbuckle. No. <laughs> oh, stuck to the face. Oh, that was good. Really, though, like, Shawn's barely done anything. And yeah. Hogan's already like, no, I'm not going to let you slam me into the turnbuckle. <laughs> And now it's like the turnbuckle. God, imagine being the referee of this match and not knowing what the hell to do. I'm sure Mike Kyoto wanted to bust out hysterically laughing. And that's just like, (laughs) he normally does it, but it's just a little extra oomph just to sell the point that it's like, well, if this was a normal match, I would have just gone over the top. Now I'm going to spin off to the side and... I love the fact he's taking every single opportunity to just slap him in the face. <laughs> I would have loved to have been inside the writer's room for this match. I want to see like Vince on like the production headset, like thinking what the, what's going on. God, imagine being backstage, no, like, sitting around with the boys watching this and just kind of being like, "Oh my god, this is ridiculous." Vince is probably getting a kick out of this because he knows Hogan and he knows, you know, Sean in his prime. I wonder what a guy like The Undertaker is thinking here, you Mm. know? Well, I could see Undertaker either being like, well, hey, Sean's doing this and he's kind of being a dick, but Hogan's deserving of it. Or being like, well, you should have just been professional and did the, you know, the normal match. Well, well, that announce table was like really heavy. (laughs) Like yeah, table. Sean just pushed it over. Yeah, I Hogan probably would have thrown it into the first row. 
I can imagine like Jim Cornette might have had a heart attack watching this match. He would have been <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> like, God damn it, Sean, you're just exposing the business. God damn. I actually think <laughs> queer piece of shit. I actually think in this case, Cornette would have been like, fuck, I hate him, but I hate Hogan so much more, so <laughs> fuck it, go Sean. <laughs> like Who booked this shit? What's up with the uh, the people in the yellow shirts? They are they like a they must have won some contest? Like a yeah, tourist troop or like uh, is it like the type of thing where those family members go? Well, we all need to wear yellow so that way we all stand out. We can find each other in case little Billy runs off. I thought showing their support for Hulk Hogan. Oh, uh, they should have had somebody wearing red. You got the security barricades all messed up too. Credit where it's due, though, like, this could have been shorter. Oh, yeah. This could have been something that ended five minutes ago. But it's the main event, so they can't really make it too, too short. Well, my, well you could have seen a situation like, I mean, I, I know Michaels wouldn't have gone that far, but if stuff we saw at the end of towards WCW and stuff like that, especially involving Hogan, Michaels could have just laid down. I could totally see Sean doing that. If this wasn't the main event, I could totally see Sean Michaels just, all right, I'm going to just lay down. I think Michael's a slightly different breed of animal in this case. They're like, I, I, I'll, I'll still make a mockery of you in this entire match, but I'll also entertain everyone at the same time. Yeah. Like, he, he doesn't, well, especially like post 2002 Michaels, strikes me as the sort of person that would actually like want to give the fans a show. Like, pre 98 Michaels, I could totally see him just laying down. You wouldn't he, have gone out there. Oh, he yeah, he wouldn't have gone out. There. He would have, he would have walked, he would have gone to WCW. <laughs> Before he would have gone out to that match and had like this sort of match with Hogan. Is this where he um, splits him open? I think that's what they've been going for. Yeah, he's, he's a, a... Uh, yeah, yeah. I wow. think I think he just did it right then. Yeah, yeah that's the yep. Pretty obvious uh, oh. blade job when it comes <laughs> Fuck, to that. That was brutal. I mean, that's the camera shot for that was really just him running his hand all over his head. God, that is like ridiculous amount. <laughs> applied for some punches. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize just punching one spot on your head causes like the entire forehead to split open. <laughs> and you know, even though we don't necessarily love the fact that there's no blood anymore, it stops stupid shit like that. Like oh, all yeah. he did was punch him in the face, and he's got like a yeah. Huge what's gash. what's safer, running a small razor blade across your forehead, or having Brock Lesnar repeatedly knock your elbow into Randy Orton's forehead and actually legitimately like injure him? Yeah, I would take. Lesnar, and it's just look. At this. All he did was punch him. <laughs> it adds to the overselling of the match, though. Yeah, but didn't you know that Shawn Michaels' punches have razor blades attached to them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could believe it for this match. In hindsight, have... this is 2005. Shawn oh. Michaels has been a big deal for ten years. Hogan is still doing this to him. I'm glad Bret Hart didn't get the match with Hogan in 93. Sleeper hold. When's the last time we've seen one of those? Very long time. I used to like the sleeper. I think the last Hogan match. <laughs> well, every Hogan match is a sleeper hold. Yeah. I don't think Michaels knows how to put it on properly. Well, we'll Either that, that or that Hogan's just in a bad spot. Yeah, that doesn't look very held on very well. I mean, it, it doesn't help the fact that Michaels is considerably shorter than Hogan. Yeah. Well, that's why he's not going to take any of his damage, brother. Jesus. Oh my yeah, God. I, I think he might have cut his, himself a little bit too deeply there. There's one of those scenarios where, I mean, I have said this since the very beginning of me doing wrestling uh, reviews and different stuff on the internet. By no means is my, any of my criticism ever saying I could do anything better when it comes to in-ring performances. I would be horrible. I have a bad back, and I don't do anything. I sit on the computer all day, and I have a bad back. Imagine me taking bumps. Ridiculous. But if you tell me, on top of being thrown around and punched in the face and everything like that, that I've got to just, like, take a razor blade and cut my head open? No. <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to just be, like, bleeding into my eyeballs because it makes it look like the other guy's punches are better. Fuck that. <laughs> Especially not doing it over and over and over and over again like Ric Flair Shawn and Michaels' arm. Hogan used to do. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that arm is like, that doesn't look good at all. <laughs> look at his face. Now, this would be oh all the type of stuff that we'd see back in the day, or like, this is, they're not stopping the match. Referee has no gloves on. Now, it would be all in black and white. Match would be stopped. Oh, yeah, certainly for that sort of level of cut. Like, he has fucked that, like, blade job up royally at this point. God, the, the ring is bloodstained. It probably made the match look a lot more brutal than it was. To be, you know, to be fair, still shots. I don't think this was the only match where there was blood on the night. Oh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure, sure the previous match was a... Well, that was a, a no disqualification match between Batista and JBL. That probably had blood as well. Oh, it's like and the flying And Matt form. Hardy bled a gusher. In the oh, yeah, well. he did as well. Yeah, because he hit the turnbuckle. Yep. John Michaels is so damn great. Even something as simple as just doing the, the forearm and then kicking himself back up is just... I always I stand, love it. I stand by the fact that, like, I know it's been eight years since he's been in the ring. He, he'd come back, and I think he'd still be one of the best workers in the entire roster. Yeah. I always like his elbow drops when he lands him, of course, <laughs> but... Oh, for a second there, it almost looked like Shawn Michaels was going to get oh hit God, by Twitchy up. Music. <laughs> oh my God. This is... I don't realize it until you have somebody like Shawn Michaels being a dick like this, but Hogan stuff can be really hokey, man. You, you don't say. All right, so what are the odds that Hogan nips up to? <laughs> <laughs> so at, at this my, point... Michael should have hit the leg drop in this match. At, at the me is like, oh shit, Bret Hart's coming right now. I was very sad when that didn't happen. The cocky smile. By the way, that was the second nip up for Shawn Michaels in like three minutes. Just to prove that none of this is yep. facing him. <laughs> that, that cockiness. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Look at him. He's just like, yeah, have fun. Wait, I think they think we want oh, Bret. He's got the yeah. Yeah, they said we want Brett, and he says you want Brett. Okay, but worst sharpshooter of all time coming up. Yeah, he 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 never knew how to put the sharpshooter on properly, which is amazing. <laughs> Look at this. Like him and The Rock never knew how to put sharpshooters on. Yeah, the Rock did it considerably better than this. <laughs> oh yeah, this is terrible. But like, I always love when referees slide into the ring. Is that oh, Hebner? it should have been Hebner. It should have been Hebner. Oh Hebner. come on. Well, it's his son, right? Oh, that's uh, Chad Patton. Really? That this should have been Hebner. Chad Patton is Earl Hebner's son. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Well, it should have been the the evil twin Hebner who could have called for the bell on Hogan. <laughs> and one of the cameramen should have shot a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Might have cauterized the wound. Come out and just throwing powder in his eyes. As well. Yeah. That salt that just happens to look like powder. <laughs> yeah, Hogan, that. you shouldn't be tapping out. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, he is tapping. That's once more. That's definitely a submission. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Well, then officially in the record books, if we're gonna say uh, Roman Reigns won at the Greatest Royal Rumble, then uh, Hulk Hogan tapped out of Shawn Michaels. <laughs> so I've got to say this: Coachman is significantly less annoying than he is nowadays. Commentary for this match. Yeah, because nowadays he's too focused in on. Hey, I did real sports. Yeah, the word of the hour is uh <laughs> Got a Hurricane Helms shirt on, guy in the background. <laughs> Ref bump number two. Are you kidding me? But nowadays I mean this is already getting a bad reaction, but nowadays like Nowadays they the the crowd would not beach balls would have started flying. Be I think at this point a beach ball would have hit the ring. That would be great though. Like you put, oh, they they put the beach ball in the ring and they put a referee shirt on it. Now that's the real. And then somebody pops it and then it's like, no, another ref bump. <laughs> I would love something like this to happen nowadays. Have like multiple ref bumps. Why not? I think that that would be so much more fun than just the kind of stuff that we tend to get. I think so. They're probably gonna do that for the uh, like Lesnar uh, ranks match. So. Well, that's the one match that shouldn't have that kind of stuff because they threw that into the ground. But uh, anything else, you know, if they were to do that kind of the ref bump type of thing for 
some old Joe AJ Styles or something like that. Like that'd be cool. Oh no. Uh, uh, uh look away if you're not uh, interested in stuff that happened uh, pre Benoit. <laughs> I miss these steel chairs, though. As much yeah. as I don't ever want people to do this kind of stuff anymore, I miss them. Please hit him in the back. I'm I'm pretty sure he doesn't. But... Oh, he's going to nail him right across the head. He might actually obviously miss. I don't remember if he hits him properly or not. Whoa. Uh, uh, See, he like... It was light. It was, it was, a, gla- it was a glancing blow, but still, it, 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 it really off-puts me to see that sort of stuff now. <laughs> But it sells. <laughs> He's got the twitching like, leg, like, you know. It's not difficult. If you want to do a chair shot to the, to the quote-unquote head, put Pick your hand hands up. up. Yeah. It's not the hardest thing in the world. I love the twitching. I want to see something uncomfortable. Uh, the, the following year at SummerSlam, Foley and Flair have an I Quit match. And Molina tries to come out to save Foley. And he says the words, just about a year shy of Benoit, he says the words, I'll kill you too, bitch, to Molina. Like, well, that Flair is the, said that. Flair yeah, said. Flair said to Molina, I'll kill you too, bitch. Mm-hmm. Like, th- think about it. Like, yeah, well, threatening to hit it with a baseball bat. A with bar- a, with bar- a bar bar baseball bat. Yeah. This is where we were. Well, th- th- that was, pr- that was uh, pre-women's uh, evolution. Yeah. At that point, they were just props. Mm. Oh, Such a good one. A nice connection, yeah. That's a lot better than the one in the ladder match. Look at this, look at this, look at this. (laughs) (laughs) And he gets right up and he's he's just like, nah, I'm perfectly fine. So upset, so angry. What's that sign say? Something butt liquor? (laughs) Look at the crowd. The crowd is just completely on their feet now. I know this is so hokey and so corny, but it's it works and it would still work. I bet it would still work today. It probably would. It wouldn't work with certain people. It wouldn't work with Roman Reigns because they just no. it. They, he doesn't have that whole if yeah. If Strowman, it, so it would. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> That's just like that. Might be like the most emphatic statement of. F this. That's yeah. in the match. Look at him. He's still, he's still twitching while he's on there. Like, like he just doesn't... Like, his body's well, like... Well, to be fair, Hogan's still posing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, Hogan yeah, must pose. The as well. It's like getting the sense of like him twitching. It's like a sense of, oh my god, off that big boot, my entire body doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so he wins with his finisher, of yeah. course. Wow, this was... Something. That, that Such a good match. match. Again, as I mentioned before, it's not the type of match that somebody goes, "Well, how should I get into wrestling? What matches should I watch?" You don't show them this. No, but it was, like, it was basic as all hell. It was like one of the most basic matches you're ever going to see, but it was so entertaining. Like both matches really have like an element of real simplicity about them, but like, and they're and they're good and they're memorable in very, very different ways. As like, hokey that, as it was, I wish Roman was able to do something like this and people get on their feet like like here for Hogan. Mm-hmm. Which is said to like previous match we watched the ladder match like it was an example of like really basic fundamental wrestling done to the high standard. And this is a case of really fundamental basic wrestling done to the complete mockery of the entire concept of basic fundamental pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah. And they're both pretty much equally as uh, entertaining. Oh. You should have kicked him. See, I'm and we didn't whether they still thought they were going to do another rematch. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know, of course, like the actual well, Hogan behind the scenes he stuff. Was, but... he, was, he was still open to the idea of rematches until part, like beyond SummerSlam, but the promo that Michael cut that was mocking him afterwards told him not to do. But it seems quite weird because Michael's turned babyface immediately afterwards. Right. To me, this yeah. seems like the end of it. Yeah. A lot. I mean, I at this point in my like time of like, being a, a bit more of a smart, keen, know-it-all wrestling fan, 
I've kind of got my sense of never believe anything that Hulk Hogan says about anything. Any uh, indication of what they're saying? I uh, think he said, he said something to the effect that I just wanted to see if you still had it. Oh, yeah. Thanks. And then I'm sure uh, something much more quietly. Yeah, that's that was... the, the quiet part of the, what more so of just being like, if Hogan would have been like, that was ridiculous, brother. Or if like Sean would have been like, huh? <laughs> like one of those kind of things. <laughs> uh... Yeah, they are I'll still like reading lips, yeah. kind of like angrily talking. And Hogan just saying, oh yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's a good dude. He'd be <laughs> like down for me, it's fine. <laughs> so that is Hulk Hogan versus Shawn Michaels. <laughs> it uh, sure was. Yeah. It's, amazing it's, it's match. It's a really bad one, yeah. It's so good for what it is, because it's not the type of thing that you would really want to uh, look back and be like, oh, you know, people should study this match for, you know, to take this into their careers and stuff like that. But they should study it to see how Shawn Michaels does the opposite, kind of. It just, like, it's it's fundamentally just amazing that Hulk Hogan was main eventing a pay-per-view in 2005. <laughs> like... Like he was main event in pay per views twenty, almost thirty years before that. Yeah. And like I said, he tried his hardest to book himself versus Austin at WrestleMania. Came yeah. out live on Raw and said, "What do you think, Hulkamaniacs, about me and Stone Cold at WrestleMania?" And it's like, R- really? Yeah, it's just a case of he never knew that he, when his time was up. <laughs> There's like five minutes of Hogan posing at the end of this pay-per-view. Yeah. Typical Hogan uh, main event pay-per-view kind of thing. Oh yeah, living the spotlight. But you know what I hate is as dumb as a lot of it is, the people are eating it up. Yep. With Hogan, if, if it was anybody else, they'd probably like crap all over it, but it's Hogan, so it's um, it's it's fine. If it was Cena 2008? Oh, God. <laughs> well, Cena even at that point in time. Like, even at this point, you're still getting booed against Jericho. So if he'd have done this shtick. It's just people love nostalgia. Yeah. If you remind them of their childhood, they're still going to cheer. Or it ended with Hogan just not even leaving the ring yet. He probably stayed in post for another five minutes. And also, this this is Hogan pre-sex tape. This is Hogan pre-racism scandal. So there really wasn't... Yeah, he's untouchable. Yeah, unless you like knew about always politicking behind the scenes and stuff like that and delve into the idea about WCW and stuff like that, which most of these fans wouldn't have done, then he was a completely untouchable and beloved baby face hero. And Michaels was a dick for the entire time, like building up to this, so it was probably quite easy to just get behind Hogan. And yeah. Michaels would go on to feud with the Master Chris Pete. Masters. <laughs> <laughs> And we all know what Hogan ended up going up to. So uh, I think that that's kind of a wrap for that. Uh, Make sure you guys leave us your comments below. Tell us what you thought about this. Tell us what you thought about our commentary or anything else you want to chime in on. Make sure you also hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel and ring the bell for notifications because the next couple of videos that we got coming up, you know, you'll get the little heads up when uh, those get posted. You could also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at SmartOutMoment. Uh, always check smartoutmoment.com for everything other than the podcast material because we've got like the May Young Classic. Spoilers are going to be coming up uh, tonight, uh, tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to this. We've also got like the weekly articles and whatever and the uh, extra stuff we end up actually putting up there. Fanboysanonymous.com is my place for movie reviews and the geek culture spectrum stuff. So go to fanboysanonymous.com and find all the social media accounts and the YouTube and such for that. Pay attention to uh, everybody else's plugs, too, because uh, Calvin and Robert have some things that they want to toss out here. Robert? Uh, yes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dude Felice. You can check out WrestleZone for your daily wrestling news, because when I'm not working with Tony, I'm working for WrestleZone. You can check out Time Killer Apparel and buy a t-shirt, and I always appreciate that. 
And the triple threat this week, which Callum also participated in, is all about NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. So if you want to know our opinions on that a little bit ahead of the podcast, check that out. Callum? Yeah, like uh, Rob says, just check out the um, triple threats to, and all the other weekly articles that are going out on Spark at the moment. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at Wigmeister14. One last thing for me to plug, everybody. If you are fond of these uh, commentary tracks and the different kind of main events that we have been doing recently when we get a chance to do them, then think about uh, donating to our Patreon because we've got some different tiers on there and some of them actually include the idea of sponsoring, so to speak, doing these, taking the time out to actually put in more effort to do these kind of things where you can potentially request a topic that we do. So if you really wanted to see like a top rope list about the best managers of all time or something like that, you donate and you get to that tier and you could end up uh, requesting it. We can, you know, kind of figure out what we could do and record that and stuff. Uh, The more funds that come our way, the more that we can kind of be motivated to take the time out to actually do these kind of things and to, uh, Kind of keep the lights on and everything like that. So hit up the Patreon if you've got some spare change that you want to throw our way, whether it's a dollar or a hundred dollars, you know, whatever the case may be. Another way that you guys can do that is to hit up the T Public and the Red Bubble merchandise shops. You can buy a T-shirt or you know they have like clocks and somebody bought a like a bag recently, like a handbag or something with one of the wasted designs. The I'm so wasted, I think it was <laughs> on the Fanboys Anonymous one. So, you know, there's a lot of different varieties there. And uh, if you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see for that too, drop them in the comments below and let me know. And I'll try to whip up a design or something if I can. But all your support is greatly appreciated, whether it's on the monetary side or just by liking and sharing and passing the word along and telling your friends about us and stuff and just your continued support and all the views and so on and so forth. So in the future, thank you for all your support that's happening later on. We will see you later on with the hot tags, and anything else that's coming up next week. If I remember correctly, yep, next week is going to be the predictions for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 and SummerSlam, and then, of course, the post-show for both of those. So a lot of stuff happening next week. You're going to hear us a lot. Uh, And we will see you then. Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been another Smart Out Moment, and we're being counted out. 